Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what a day in the market, and you finally see the sell button. Actually, got pushed a few times, but don't fret because as we speak, the market is pushing up hardcore right now because Tesla just reported. Mike's what they hear so far. I don't think they've been on the call yet. But again, you've had a nice recovery, and I'll show you why the recovery started. It was it's pretty fascinating to watch. And again, I don't expect you to see this because I have a channel and all this stuff, so I watch the stocks every day. But you know, one thing I want you to understand, actually get a, a feel for here is I'm going to show you what accelerates the downward pressure, right? And why we go down so much faster than we normally go up. And you, you cannot make this stuff up. It is amazing to watch. And, and I'm talking about the manipulation is insanity. And I'll show you the news that came out today. It's like, really? Really? I mean, that, that made no sense last night. But you'll see how much social media does affect the market because it triggers algorithms, right, to kick in and stuff. And then there's another important level I'll show you that when this breaks, it, it just, it, it's like, almost like a, not like a waterfall, but it really creates a massive, massive downward pressure. And you'll be asking yourself like, man, we're not making a turn here. What's going on? Where's the bulls at? And, you know, I'll, I'll show you that because I want you to be able to see it. And when you see it, you go, ooh, okay, I saw it for myself. Plus, well, actually, I'll show you exactly why you saw NVIDIA, Apple, the mega cats really holding up so well last week. With Apple going to an all-time new high, you know, NVIDIA doing what NVIDIA does. And the other one's really holding up when maybe other stocks weren't. But now we'll start off with this. I told the members this morning in the morning news brief, I said it should be noted there are some potential signs of distribution for S&P 500 on the shorter time frames with the S&P making lower highs and lower lows since last Thursday on the hourly chart. Again, this is on the shorter term time frame, not the higher time frame. And what I was talking about was this right here. Along, you may also notice I put about some dark pool levels, which I never talk about. It was just suspicious where they're at. But here you see a high and low, lower high and lower low, lower high, and then boom. There is your lower low. Now, of course, what do you see above us, right? RTH gap, tons of liquidity up here. And what does that also do? We have fallen out of the weekly options expiration where they thought we would be in that range, right? And so you may also notice kind of bounce to the penny on a certain level as well, which we're going to talk about. But what happens to excel the selling pressure, and we're going to switch to the S&P here, is the gamma flip level, right? So I had this line marked out this morning. You can see they were trying their best not to let us go below it. But as soon as you start to go below it, now you're fixing into, you're going to negative gamma territory. This accelerates the selling pressure. What else happened? All of a sudden, Apple goes down 1.25% in like four minutes. Really? Apple? Look at this news right here. Apple analyst Kuo says company cut iPhone 16 orders by 10 million units. But if you remember last week, what sent it to all-time highs? It was talking about iPhone demand, right? And all of a sudden, this comes out, and for Apple to drop that fast and that amount of time, yeah, it's going to shock the market. So, of course, it accelerated the selling pressure dramatically. And this news actually came out last night overseas. So it was amazing. All of a sudden, it's hitting Twitter and all these different uh, news stations and stuff. And so that accelerated the selling pressure right and of course that's why you see this right here going on but then it hit this level right here a lot of them, everything came into a level of support all at once right and this is that shaded area remember we were trapped here for 14 days and i said if it comes down that's going to be support and to the penny boom that's where that bounced at when you skip over here and go to the spy right spy comes down again we get out of this box we hit this level right here which was support for it Boom, bounce like that right there. We'll get rid of this because remember I told you guys, if you come into a fair value gap like we had marked out here and it cuts through it like a hot knife through butter, the selling pressure is, is selling is going to continue. You can almost guarantee it, okay? That's the way it's going to be. And I said, if we break this blue line, we'll come down here to the fair value gap. We came down the fair, fair value gap, cut through it like a hot knife through butter, and then came down into this next support right here and then bounce. And all of them hit a support at the exact same time, the S&P, the SPY chart, and also the Qs, which I'll show you in just a second. Uh, and we'll talk about IWM as well, uh, just to make sure we get on that one too. But there is the level. I mean, to the penny. Boom, 574.45, there it was. It bounced. All of them bounced at the same time right here. And so when we kind of pull back out and go to the higher time frame, again, what do we need to get above now? That blue line that we broke down below, right? So now we get to see, they ran it up. As I'm recording this, actually ran us back up into the box, right? Back up into our weekly options expiration or weekly options range. And so that blue line right there, which was going to be support, now will be resistance coming in tomorrow around 579.13. And again, you got fair value gaps, you got RTH gaps to kind of pull into. And so, like I said, when you get outside these boxes, sometimes they'll just suck it back up, right? Doesn't mean it's got to stay. Don't mean we can't sell down tomorrow. 
But again, we'll see what they do during the Asian session. If we do come down again, 574, 57, that's going to be support. If that breaks, then yes, you will get to see finally uh, some real selling going on. But this is what we want to see. This is what they're going to do overnight is bring us up and then push it back down. Or are we just going to recover and then start trading sideways once again? Right. That's what we're looking at right here. With Tesla reporting, obviously the market likes what they hear so far. Again, that'll probably get tech going again if that's the case. Then it's going to be really hard to sell it down, especially if the Mag 7 get going. And I'll show you something, uh, a good reason why you saw like NVIDIA and Apple going to all time highs and things like that. And, the, and those big tech stocks just hanging in there all week long last week. OK, now you come over here to the queues. And again, what do you see? We were trading in this range. We drop right out of it right there. They sucked us back up into what is our options. Uh, weekly expected move came down to that blue line. Remember I told you if the blue line breaks, the ascending trend line comes into play and it bounced in that blue line, which we've been sitting there for two weeks now talking about it, 485 to the penny. Again, they all bounced at the same time when it came to support and you had a really nice, I think it was like 0.75% move up in a very short amount of time. Okay, so no surprise there. So this is back back into uh, the weekly expiration. If that blue line breaks, then we'll talk about the trend line. But it looks like we're probably gonna get some upside tomorrow. We'll have to see. Uh, IWM, we talked about coming down here, mitigating this daily fair value gap. Again, it didn't bounce on the trend line, but it did mitigate the entire daily fair value gap, if I'm not mistaken, right there. Closed right below this line. I recorded this probably like, I don't know, 20 minutes before the close. And so it actually closed right up on top, right at the bottom of that line. So we'll see if we end up moving up again. When it bounced, <laughs> so funny how it was bounced, it was to the penny, the 0.79 Fibonacci level, which I found to be kind of funny. And so, you know, this one, of course, is doing what? Bitcoin was what? Red. What is IWM? It's still, it's still entangled with Bitcoin. Okay. And so, and as soon as Bitcoin bounced, IWM bounced as well today. It's amazing how that works. And so until, you know, that entanglement ends, then I guess you can pretty much kind of forget about uh, seeing this go anywhere else. So it needs crypto to start rallying. Again, are we below the weekly expected move? Yes, we are. There's no doubt about that. Now, why did the mega caps do so well last week? A lot hanging there. Why is NVIDIA going crazy? Why was Apple going to all time highs? Because that's where they were putting it. The fund flows, $12 billion. You don't see anything else near that, do you? And, they, and I think we've seen this quite a few uh, weeks in a row now. That, that's a safe haven, right? Those are the stocks that will go up, that can survive in a slower growth area and all that stuff. That's the ones that are exposed to AI, right? Speaking of AI, here's AMD. We did get here about a day early, and I thought we would, to this trend line and support line right here. It did get a bounce right there. So we'll see, you know, are we going to come down here? Are we finally going to get this bounce up? 164, probably be your first target. 173 will be the second target. And so just watch for a MACD uh, bullish cross, what you're looking for. Now, when it comes to earnings, obviously we've got a lot of them coming on tomorrow. you got American Airlines, UPS, Southwest. Obviously, these, the other airlines have been doing really good. And so has transportation. Okay. Now looking at data, we finally do have data tomorrow that will absolutely shake the market up. They'll use it to push the market where they want to push it. But it is unemployment claims, flash manufacturing PMI, flash services PMI, new home sales. Okay. So we'll see what happens in the aftermarket tonight uh, with Tesla doing what they're doing. If that holds, obviously that could push the market up for sure because Microsoft actually was relatively strong compared to a lot of the mega caps. So if that continues to push up, then and apple starts to recover then guess what going back green right might just stay in that range though okay we have to wait and see let me know what you think about that so please hit that like subscribe button on your way out thank you about signing for the membership two free member videos discord and a morning news brief like i just gave you an example of in the beginning of this video so less than a mcdonald's combo so anyway guys have a good one and i'll see you tomorrow